Like many a nerdy kid growing up, one of the ways that I learned how much I loved knowledge came from nights watching Jeopardy at my grandmother's. At 7 p.m., she'd settle in her favorite armchair with a cocktail, and I'd sit cross-legged on the couch as we'd watch people in awkward office wear answer questions for money. We'd shout answers, guessing and trying our best. I found that I was particularly good at remembering trivia. Everything in that moment would slow down, and my hyper-competitive brain would settle into a zone, just rapidly pulling pieces of information from hidden drawers in my mind. It was really calming to know things, and even better to feel good at it. I remember how my grandmother would look at me, and she'd smile, and she'd say, wow, I'm so proud of you. And that, that feeling, it stayed with me as I made my way through undergrad and then got my PhD in British history like a nerd and became a professor like a bigger nerd. <laughs> I played trivia at bars often and felt that same rush as my brain raced for answers down side alleys and corridors. Friends would say, oh, you're really smart, TJ. You should go on Jeopardy. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I'd always thought about it, but fear always held me back. What if I embarrassed myself? What if I wasn't as smart as everybody said I was? I finally gave in in the second week of lockdown in 2020. <laughs> it was late March, we were all getting a little stir crazy, and Jeopardy was planning for the fall season and to look for new contestants. So they were allowing people to take the test online. A week later, I got an email for a Zoom with producers where I'd play some games and get evaluated. And by early May, they told me that I was in the contestant pool and that I might be accepted sometime in the next 18 months. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. I tried not to get my hopes up. Now, like most of us, I dealt with the increasing boredom and isolation of the pandemic by bleaching and dyeing my hair a panoply of different colors. Red, green, purple, orange. By August, I'd done a fresh rebleach, dyeing my hair an electric turquoise, combining two manic panic colors out of a deep existential ennui. And then I cut my hair in a mohawk. I felt like a fucking badass. And of course, eight hours later, <laughs> Jeopardy called. <laughs> cool. They wanted me on the set in eight days. <laughs> it was happening. Oh my God, it was happening. I was gonna drive up to LA and be on the premier nerd game show while looking like the love child of Mr. T and Elisa Frank Trapper Keeper. <laughs> Oh boy! <laughs> so Jeopardy tapes five episodes a day. So to keep that illusion of a new day, new episode, all arriving contestants are required to bring five changes of outfits. That fact alone created a bit of a quiet dilemma. I love clothes, but I'm also a bit wacky in my clothes choices. And as a professor, I get a lot of leeway. Plus, during 2020, who even knew what regular clothing was anymore? What is a pant? I don't know. So, and let's be honest, I had already committed a follicular choice. So I knew that I had to tone down my look. So I walked into the studio lugging five sets of hangers packed with outfits and dressed in what I could only describe as the boring heterosexual office version of me. And I felt my nerves ratchet up as high as they could go. They ushered us into what would serve as our green room. To create enough space for distancing and masking, a separate studio had been commandeered. The Wheel of Fortune Studio. <sighs> Friends, let me reveal one heartbreaking truth to you. The wheel is small. Six feet in diameter, small. The camera is full of lies. <laughs> now, pandemic life had changed the entire setup of the show. 
The Jeopardy crew instructed us that we were to be masked at all times, except for when we were on stage, and we had to carry a powder puff in case we started to sweat, because no one, not anyone, was allowed to touch us. The Trebek himself would be six to eight feet away at all times. We found out that the first match of the day would be against a three-time returning champion, Ryan, a very handsome legal tech with an affable smile that did not hide the absolutely fucking terrifying laser focus behind his eyes. <laughs> now, this man had crushed three days of competitors. He was like a shark in a slightly ill-fitting blazer and dress shirt with those like top two buttons undone and it was like looking really good and... <laughs> Stop, focus, focus, TJ. And then we all might have to face hot Ryan. <sighs> they called the first two contestants in our group to compete against Ryan. They put up a good fight, but honestly the end was never in doubt. And with like an aw shook smile that hid how fucking deadly he was, Ryan absolutely mowed through them. Question after question. Daily double after daily double. By final Jeopardy, Ryan had $25,000. And his two opponents combined had 10000 Fuck! He was the only one to get the final Jeopardy question correct. Ryan was now a four-time winner with a total winning of over $100,000. And at that moment, guess whose name got called? <laughs> TJ, you're up next! The contestant coordinator smiled her terrifyingly perky Hollywood smile, and it was so big I could even see it behind her mask. She gave me a big thumbs up and ushered me in along with Denise, a sweet stay-at-home mom, toward the stage and our doom. <laughs> Shit. How do you even say I'm so fucked in the form of a question? <laughs> Denise smiled at me as we waited. She wore a sensible blue sweater, flats, and some dress pants. She looked like the kind of mom who baked cookies and wrote little cards in her kids' lunchboxes. She leaned in closer to me. Let's fuck this shit up. <laughs> Denise whispered, not breaking eye contact. <laughs> I liked Denise. Okay, what they don't tell you is how fucking bright the Jeopardy stage is. So as I nervously stepped behind my podium with my actual goddamn buzzer in my hand, <laughs> all right, I thought, this is it. This is it. This is where I live the ultimate trivia nerd fantasy. <laughs> the one I've had since I was a kid at my grandma's house. I beamed at Filthy Mouth Denise. I gave a slightly terrified and horny smile at Ryan. <laughs> <Hi>. <laughs> and then Alex Trebek walked on stage. <laughs> Alex Trebek, standing five foot 11 in a tailored gray suit, blue tie, and silky silver hair that I wanted to walk over and just sort of gently tuck behind one ear. Hi, hi Alex. <laughs> Battling an aggressive cancer and yet brighter than even the stage lights, he was a star in every sense of the word. He had like this easy charm and he was in absolute control of the place. Never mind the fact that Alex Trebek had been hosting Jeopardy since I was a five month old baby. <laughs> this man was made for this job. Just a few weeks after his 80th birthday, he looked confident, capable, and I'll admit it, he looked pretty sexy. That's right. He walked out, waved to the audience, turned and looked at the contestants, and stopped at me. He stared. Was it the hair? I mean, Ryan looked like a Jeopardy poster boy, and I clearly look like Jeopardy fan fiction, right? <laughs> In front of the cameras, Alex fucking Trebek pantomimed looking me up and down, exaggeratedly seeing my mohawk for the first time, and smiled and said, we'll talk. <laughs> 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 
I came a little. (laughs) (sighs) The show started to go by in a blur. The questions come, you have seconds to buzz in to make your brain work an answer in the form of a goddamn question. All those years of yelling at people like they were idiots was a mistake. (laughs) Actually, everybody knew the answer most of the time. Um, It's just who's faster with the buzzer. And Ryan, Ryan, that shark was a fucking master buzzer. I stumbled badly at first and felt my heart jackhammering in my chest. At one moment, I thought I had an answer right, and I totally fucked up, so let's join me on it. All right. (laughs) I'll take feeling bullish for $400. John Bull is the personification of this nation. What is Great Britain? Be more specific. What is the United Kingdom of Great Britain? Be more specific. What is the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland? No. The answer is England. I have a literal PhD in British history. Cool. At the end of the first round, I was at negative $400. I'm gonna take a drink because I'm nervous thinking about this. Alex was staring at me. The camera was trained on me. And in a few months, my friends, my enemies, my family would watch me go down in flames. And then suddenly, it clicked. I felt that same sensation I'd felt countless times before when playing trivia. There's this energy buzzing behind my eyes as my brain rushes to pull knowledge from hidden corners. And I started hitting points after points. They had an entire category titled, Ooh, Fireworks. (laughs) And because I am both a recovering theater kid and a shameless homosexual, I read that category like I was seeing pyrotechnics for the first time every time. I'll take, Ooh, Fireworks for $200, Alex. And then I asked it like a question, Ooh, Fireworks for $400. And then with the wrong emphasis on the wrong syllable, oof, I works, uh, 600. <laughs> Denise got the final one in the category, and I will be damned if she didn't do fireworks with some jazz hands. <laughs> Fuck yes, Denise. <laughs> and then I even got the daily double from that category. From Greek words meaning fire and art, this is the craft of making and shooting off fireworks. Pyrotechnics, there you go, eh? That's right, y'all smart. That's right, what is? Kiss, kiss, say, pyrotechnics. Um, the points started piling up. I passed Ryan. I might not actually embarrass myself. What is, I might actually be fucking pulling this off. At Final Jeopardy, I had 16,000. Ryan had 8,800. Denise, (laughs) yeah, clever. Denise had 7,600. Respectable, Denise. The Final Jeopardy category came up. Roland Garros, for whom the French Open Stadium is named, gained fame with this 460-mile first solo flight across this body of water. I'll let you think about it for a second. I fucking knew this one, just in case you're curious. I rushed to write the Mediterranean Sea in cursive on that little electronic pad and prayed, prayed to every deity I knew and some made up ones that I had wagered enough. Denise got it, but she was too far behind to catch me and I still love you, girl. But Ryan? Ryan guessed the English fucking channel. Holy fuck, I just fucking won Jeopardy. (laughs) 
It was three years ago, thank you. Um, uh, the trivia nerd with the homo hawk had actually pulled it off. I started to tear up, my head swam, Alex congratulated me, the lights temporarily dimmed in the studio, and a mass technician came up and said, great job, champ! <laughs> Holy shit. Okay, so when you win an episode, you have exactly five minutes to make it through the meandering paths back to the Wheel of Fortune set, nod at the vastly overinflated circular money device, and quickly change. I threw on a new dress shirt, different pants, a bow tie, and an old black sweater. It seemed safe and boring, and dare I say, moderately appropriate. <laughs> I stepped back onto the brightly lit studio set. I took my place now at the winning podium. Eh, eh? There we go. The other contestants arrived. Alex came out and waved, congratulated me on being a winner, and cut! The sound rang out on the soundstage. Hi, TJ? There's a lot of lint on your sweater, and it's really visible on the studio lights. <laughs> Fuck. I looked down. I hadn't noticed the lint in the dressing room, but yeah, it was pretty obvious. My whole chest. A masked crew member rushed up with a lint roller, handing it to me. Due to COVID, I would have to de-lintify myself while the other contestants and the Trebek watched me. So I like stabbed and swiped across my chest, hoping I'd done it. Not quite, a voice said from a megaphone. More on your chest. I frantically swiped across my pectorals, hoping to remove the offending laundry dandruff. Nope. I started moving in slower circles on my right pec. Nope. I started circling on my left. Then I realized something. Alex fucking Trebek was staring at me. You know, me, the guy holding up production by slowly using a clothes brush one nipple at a time. <laughs> at this point, I just nervously giggle, and Alex coughed and looked me in the eye. TJ, if you keep that up, I'm afraid you're going to turn me on. Time stopped. <laughs> the world ended. I snapped my head up, looked Alex Trebek right in the goddamn eyes, and while still swiping my titties, <laughs> managed to squeak out in the least authoritative voice I have ever possessed. Just living the dream, Alex! <laughs> sufficiently cleared my chesticles of detritus. <laughs> but I was like beet red and very sweaty and I had to use the powder puff because... <laughs> and none of it mattered because Alex Trebek, the Quebecois trivia fox, had just hit on me. <laughs> and you can't take it back. <laughs> and I'll see, while the game was a close one, I didn't end up pulling it off. I lost by $700. Disrespectful. Churlish. Just churlish. I got a little overconfident with Final Jeopardy. Guessed wrong. Curse you, Moby Dick. Uh, so rude. But I won an episode of Jeopardy. I did not embarrass myself. And if there's anything I learned, it wasn't Jeopardy that made me smart or valuable to my friends and family. I was good at what I did, and yeah, my grandma definitely would have been proud of me. And what mattered more than doing well on television was the fact that I had caressed my nipples in front of a sexy octogenarian television legend and he had hit on me. And you know what? 
He could have gotten it. I said what I said. And to that, I just have to say, ooh, fireworks. TJ Talley, ladies and gentlemen, TJ.